Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today we are going to study Russian formalism. Before I move on to the theory, I would like you to read the current slide and on that I want you to read the poem. Let me read it to you. It is a poem by E. E. Cummings, Me Up at Dulls. Me up at dulls, out of the floor, five feet stare, a poisoned mouth. Still who alive is asking, what have I done that you wouldn't have? I want you to read this poem and concentrate on the language of the poem. Do you find that there is something unusual about the use of language in this form, especially in the written form. I'm sure you would have noticed that this short form does not carry any punctuation mark. You would also notice that the very first line, Neopat does, is grammatically unusual. At the same time, you would have noticed that there is the use of capitalized letters in the middle of the poem, not just at the beginning of each verse, but the words that are capitalized come at the end of the line, me and you, come at the beginning of the line, but stare and what, which have been capitalized, are at the end of the line. At the same time, you would also notice that I, which is usually written in the capital letter, is written in the small letter I. If we try to take out the unusualness of language from this poem and make it sound like the everyday language, it would sound something like this. A poison mouth who is still alive looks up at me from the floor as if asking, what have I done that you wouldn't have? You would notice the change in the punctuation, the proper placing of the capital letters, the inverted commas, the question mark, which determines whether a statement is a simple statement or it is a question. None of which we see is present in the poem. So, if said in a simple, everyday kind of way, this is probably what this statement would look like. But since the poem is a work of art, therefore, you will notice that the aesthetics is created by making the language seem a bit unusual. Let us take a look at some other famous poetic lines as well. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies and all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. Thus mellowed to that tender light, which heaven to gaudy day denies. In this stanza, which is taken from Byron's poem, She Walks in Beauty Like the Night, you would also notice that the very first line contains a simile. And there is an exaggerated expression in which the beauty of 
the woman is described. The next text is a short poem, not just a stanza, it's a complete poem by Wordsworth. My heart leaps up. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began, so is it now, I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old, or let me die. The child is father of the man, and I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. In this poem too, you would notice the unusual manner in which the language has been used, and the expression such as bound each to each is also sort of unusual. The feeling that we get when we read these poems is that something very simple has been expressed in an unusual or in a strange manner. When we study formalism, we especially give special consideration to the manner in which a text is written and how usual as the ordinary manner of speaking the ordinary way in which we talk uh, day to day with one another. But there is something special about the language which is to be observed, which is read, when we read a work of literature. One of the most important things about formalism is that it looks at the literariness of literary works. What is it that makes a work literary, that makes it grow apart from the usual everyday kind of language? So if we want to define literariness, it is the organization of language which through special linguistic formal properties distinguishes literary texts from non-literary texts. The sum of the other definition is that it is the sum of special linguistic and formal properties that distinguish literary texts from non-literary texts according to the theories of Russian formalism. Again to reinforce the same idea, literariness is the property of being literary either, either being a work of literature or knowledgeable of literature. So if we look at the text that I had just shown you, you would have noticed that the manner in which the language had been used, had been organized, it displayed certain distinguishing qualities, distinguishing properties from that of the language that we use every day. The language of a poem or that of a short story or that of a novel is somehow different from the normal conversation that we have.
in everyday life. So why does a literary text use a specialized kind of language? The Russian formalists claim that it is in order to make something strange. The term defamiliarization is used here. So what is defamiliarization? Defamiliarization or ostracizing is the artistic technique of presenting to audiences common things in an unfamiliar or strange way so they could gain new perspectives and see the world differently. According to the Russian formulas who coined the term, it is the central concept of art and poetry. So what we have understood is that when we talk in an everyday language, it doesn't seem unusual to us. It doesn't seem special to us. It doesn't seem very aesthetic to us or probably we are not concerned by creating an aesthetic uh, effect when we are using language for our daily communication for work but when we sit down to read a work of literature to read poetry it has to have that special effect that creates its literariness and that literariness is created by making the text look a bit different by making it look as if it is something new. That is what captures the attention of the reader and makes the reader want to read it. Otherwise, you see that if we tell things the way as it is without creating some kind of a language effect then I don't think that there would be much use of reading literature. It would just be like talking to one another but always literary writers try to create some kind of special aesthetic effect in their works that create its beauty and the element of attractiveness in the text which also helps in capturing the attention of the reader. Why? Because something that we know is being told to us in a fresh way, not in a cliched manner. That is what holds our attention. Viktor Shalovsky, now he is one of the most prominent formalists of his time. The concept that he has given is that of defamiliarization and the concept has influenced 20th century art and theory ranging over movements including Dada, postmodernism, epic theater, science fiction, philosophy, and New Testament narrative criticism. Additionally, it is used as a tactic by the movements such as culture jam. The term defamiliarization was first coined in 1970 
by Russian formalist Viktor Shlovsky in his essay, Art as the Virus. The alternate translation for it is Art as Technique. Shlovsky invented the term as a means to distinguish poetic form from pr practical language on the basis of the former's perceptibility, that is, the perceptibility of the poetic form of language. Essentially, he is stating that poetic language is fundamentally different than the language that we use every day because it is more difficult to understand. Poetic speech is formed speech. Prose is ordinary speech. Economical, easy, proper. The goodness of prose is a goddess of the accurate, facile type of the direct expression of a child. Artistic versus everyday language. For Vukteshlovsky, there is a distinction between artistic language and everyday language. And he believes that it applies to all artistic forms. According to him, the purpose of art is to import impart the sensation of things as they are perceived, not as they are known. The technique of art is to make objects unfamiliar, to make forms difficult, to increase the difficulty and length of perception because the process of perception is an aesthetic end in itself and must be prolonged. What this simply means is that there are things that we know and things that we perceive. What you perceive is your way of looking at things your way of understanding stuff. So here what he says is that the purpose of art is to impart the sensation, the feeling, to give the feeling of things as we understand them, not as the knowledge that we previously have of them. So, according to Shilovsky, the technique of defamiliarization that art uses is to make things a bit difficult or time-consuming to perceive. And with that time that is taken for perception of the unfamiliarized manner in which things are presented through art, the aesthetic value of it is prolonged. We can say that defamiliarization serves as a means to force individuals to recognize artistic language. In studying poetic speech in its phonetic and lexical structure as well as in its characteristic distribution of words and in the characteristic thought structures compounded from the words, we find everywhere the artistic trademark. That is, we find material obviously created to remove the automatism of perception. The author's purpose is to create the vision which results from the deutomatized perception. A work is created artistically so that its perception is impeded and the greatest 
possible effect is produced through the slowness of the perception. This simply means that when we look at things which are presented to us in an unusual way, it takes us a little time to understand it. If we consider the first line of the poem that I had first uh, showed you, Me up at does out of the floor quietly stare, you would notice that it in the first reading, it is very unusual. People would first and foremost be struck by, struck by the unusualness of its language, the manner, the grammar, the syntax, the punctuation, everything. And it is something that is first and foremost perceived. Otherwise, it would just be a simple story of a mouse being poisoned. So, desafamiliarization serves to force individuals to recognize artistic language. If there is no element of defamiliarization, then it would not hold, the language of literature would not hold much attraction for a reader. In short, it can be summed up that this technique is meant to be especially useful in distinguishing poetry from prose, for as Aristotle said, poetic language must appear strange and wonderful, especially in the language of poetry, you would notice that the language is made, there is special care taken in order to present a verb which is rhythmic, which rhymes, it has certain formal structure, it appears different to us from the usual because it is in its strangeness that we find the wonderful ability to move a reader. Anis Nin in the novel of the future writes, it is the function of art to renew our perception. What we are familiar with, we cease to see. The writer shakes up the familiar scene and as if by magic, we see a new meaning in it. Non-human narratives. To illustrate what he means by defamiliarization, Shlovsky uses examples from Tolstoy, whom he cites as using the technique throughout his work. He writes, the narrator of Polstoma, for example, is a horse, and it is the horse's point of view, rather than a person's, that makes the content of the story seem unfamiliar. Foreign languages. Defamiliarization also includes the use of foreign languages within a work. At the same time that Shilovsky was writing, there was a change in the use of language in both literature and everyday spoken Russian. As Shilovsky puts it, Russian literary language, which was originally foreign to Russia, has so permeated the language of the people that it has blended with their conversation. On the other hand, literature has now begun to show a tendency towards the use of dialects and or barbarisms. By barbarisms is meant an expression or a word 
which is badly formed according to traditional philological rules. For example, a word formed from elements of different languages, such as television, double roti. Television is a word which is uh, formed by the combination of Greek and Latin words and double roti in that we see that bread uh, it is formed by the combination of English and Urdu words. Fabula and Susan. Narrative plots can also be defamiliarized. The Russian formalist distinguished between the fabula or the basic story stuff of a narrative and the suze or the formation of the story stuff into a concrete plot. Kuslovsky, the Suze is the fabula defamiliarized. Kuslovsky cites Lauren Stern's Tristan Shandy as an example of a story that is defamiliarized by unfamiliar plotting. Stern uses temporal displacements, digressions, and casual disruptions, for example, placing the effects before their causes to slow down the reader's ability to reassemble the familiar story. As a result, the sujay makes strange the fabulous.